Hi, I'm Mark, and on this channel I talk about Brexit and UK politics. And HS2 Limited, builder of Britain's HS2 high-speed rail line, allegedly embezzled and destroyed documents that pointed to sharply rising costs. In addition, misleading forecasts were published, allegedly. The Sunday Times has now published this. Insiders are quoted as saying that this was done so that money would continue to flow into the project. The Sunday Times publication details how whistleblowers were ignored or false information was passed on as the estimated cost rose from £50 billion to over £100 billion. Those HS2 Limited whistleblower have described how senior managers directed staff to keep cost estimates artificially low. And people who rebelled against this were fired. And according to insiders, Parliament was not informed of the true costs of HS2 for years. And now HS2's internal fraud department wants to investigate the allegations. At the same time, the Department for Transport wants to thoroughly investigate what happened at HS2. The government is facing these explosive new allegations over the shocking failure of the HS2 project after the Sunday Times revealed that senior executives at HS2 Limited, the company contracted to build the high-speed rail line, shredded documents and used those misleading forecasts to ensure that money continues to flow into this project despite the costs. The report also explains why Prime Minister Rishi Sunak has now pulled the emergency brake. The Sunday Times investigation details, as I said, how whistleblowers were ignored or sidelined as the estimated cost rose from those 50 to over 100 billion, with official figures constantly falling short of more accurate unofficial warnings that were not taken into account. When Rishi Sunak cancelled the project, the northwestern section of the HS2 was set to cost 36 billion more than the 2010 estimate for the entire project. The company tasked with building the HS2 rail line has been accused of deliberately concealing escalating costs to ensure politicians continue to spend public money on this project. And the HS2 whistleblower have described how senior managers directed staff to keep cost estimates artificially low. Each of them was fired after attempting to raise concerns. And they claim Parliament was not informed of the true cost of HS2 for years, while at the same time voting on legislation authorizing the construction of the project. The revelations emerged in a three-month Sunday Times investigation, which gained access to internal HS2 emails, files and cost calculations, as well as secret recordings of staff describing how cost figures were just downplayed. The investigation interviewed HS2 insiders, but also former ministers and civil servants. A former HS2 analyst told the Sunday Times he repeatedly tried to inform ministers, but also the National Audit Office and HS2's fraud department about costs issues, but was told to focus on something else. Another source told the newspaper that her phone was confiscated and she was pressured to share private messages after she was seen with a whistleblower. She said she was eventually fired. A head of HS2's land and property department said his boss became aggressive and argumentative when he tried to raise concerns at a board meeting. He was later fired just 11 minutes after reporting a wrongdoing, as the report says. Copies of a 2015 Deloitte report that examined costs associated with purchasing or compensating property owners near the route were shredded, according to another whistleblower. The new allegations come after Rishi Sunak scrapped the Manchester leg of the project and amid skyrocketing costs. The total budget of 32 billion allocated in 2012 has risen to over 71 billion and some forecasts put the total at over 100 billion. And the Sunday Times concludes the report raises an obvious and worrying question. If the cost overruns and poor management at HS2 Limited uncovered earlier, perhaps the now defunct northern tips of the Y-shaped route to Manchester and Leeds could it have been saved? The dismantling of HS2 is a national embarrassment. 
The report shows how little they have learned about how HS2 Limited operates and their dealings with Parliament. HS2's internal fraud department, as I said, is now investigating allegations that the company deliberately covered up the cost overruns. Of course, the company denies wrongdoing. A Department for Transport a spokeswoman said, the government and its public bodies take such allegations seriously and will ensure they are thoroughly investigated. And that's another not so good news for Rishi Sunak, but he's probably used to it by now. According to media reports, the British Steel company British Steel is considering massive job cuts as well. Scunthorpe in the United Kingdom is a place where the company spokesman said on Monday when asked by the AFP about relevant British media reports that the company was examining its options. There would be different scenarios. The Chinese company Jingjie has been the owner of the steel company since 2020 and the job cuts are a key element in the switch from coal-fired to electric steel furnaces to produce greener steel as also the Sunday Times reported. However, no final decision would have been made yet. And according to the Guardian newspaper, British Steel makes a loss of around £30 million a month. Accordingly, jobs will be lost, particularly at the Scunthorpe Steelworks and at the headquarters in the northeast. The company had already announced that it would abolish coal-fired ovens in Scunthorpe. Competitor Tata Steel is considering cutting 3,000 jobs. The government has promised the company a £500 million grant for a new electric blast furnace at its Port Talbot plant in South Wales. A Labour opposition leader, Keir Starmer, said during a visit to Port Talbot on Monday that he had had productive discussions with union representatives about the transition to green steel. This transition must be done very carefully in order to preserve jobs and skills. And also, UK borrowing costs have hit a fresh 25-year high as investors fear higher oil prices and inflation will force the Bank of England to keep interests higher for longer. The 30-year UK gilt yield surged to 5.209%, its highest since the summer of 1998. With that, borrowing costs have risen over the past two weeks amid signs that inflation is proving to be stickier than previously expected, prompting investors to demand higher returns for their money. This rise in yields comes as investors also anticipate that global interest rates will remain higher for longer than they hoped. With inflation proving to be more persistent than originally thought, Traders are now predicting that rates won't rise much higher, but central banks will keep rates higher for longer to tame inflation before announcing any base rate cuts. And that is not good news because of the inflation. I talked about this recently, about the 6.7% in the UK. The Bank of England has increased its interest rate 14 times since December 21, bringing it to the current level of 5.25%. It feels gloomy right now with a higher rates for longer assumption helping to sour sentiment and this is reflected in the sell-off in bonds. Inflation is clearly a concern but also is government debt and I talked about this recently as well. Rising borrowing costs will give UK Chancellor Jeremy Hunt less room for spending rises or tax cuts in his autumn statement that we are all waiting for. The UK government borrows money by selling gills to financial institutions and institutional investors. The yield on a government bond is the amount of money an investor receives for owning the debt and is represented as a percentage of its price. When the price of a bond falls, yields rise and the yield is also referred as the cost of borrowing to an issuer. Government bond yields also surged in the US to levels last seen in 2007 prompted by investor uncertainty in America after the latest jobs data showed a surprisingly heated labor market. Yields on 10-year treasuries pushed above the psychologically important threshold of 5% this Monday to hit 5.018%, but still much lower than the UK. This spring, the US 10-year yield, the benchmark for asset prices across the globe, stood at 3.5%. 
And it's also majorly about deficits and about structurally higher inflation rates and spending in the West. And Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve's chairman, suggested that the central bank would hold rates at the next November meeting and neither raise them or drop them. But the Bank of England is still um, at a higher point than the EU and the US. Um, the inflation, there are always pe people talking about the inflation is a problem everywhere. And yes, and once again, I have to say the inflation is a problem everywhere. But the level of inflation is not the same everywhere. And the high level of inflation that is different in the UK, that has to do with Brexit. As much as Brexiteers want to say it's a global problem, had nothing to do with Brexit, the, the height of this problem, the amount, whatever, I'm missing the English word there, the, the gravity gravity of this problem that has to do with brexit everybody got into crises with the pandemic with the ukraine war and now with the uh, with israel defending itself in in the middle east but not to this extent and that is where the difference is but if you want to know more about it the next video is right here in the end screen i'll see you there i'll be back